Good morning and welcome to Holy Spirit Catholic Church. Please join in singing our opening hymn in choral praise, number 319, How Firm a Foundation. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. A warm welcome to all of you who are here and a warm welcome to all who are viewing this liturgy virtually. I had two texts yesterday, Father, I think we've been exposed to COVID and can we stay home? And I said, absolutely. You know, if there's a health reason, an injury reason, that's why we've continued to film if you can't come. So I commend you for watching in now so we can be together while you're apart. Just a little announcement I got handed to me coming in. There's a white car in the parking lot in the handicap area with the trunk up. So maybe you know that or not. I don't know if it's going to rain, but if you have a white car handicap, uh, they found one that had the trunk up and you may want to handle that. I'd like to thank you for being here. You know, to be here at 11 o'clock when you could be home sleeping, it's sort of like, that takes discipline. That takes your desire to be here. There's a good reason you came. And then the determination to do whatever it takes to get showered and ready to be here. What we're going to hear the readings the church gives us today is that there's discipline involved in everything you want to do that's good, and sometimes it's painful, but that the fruits of that discipline are going to be the reward for why you do it. So I commend you for tuning in. I commend you for being here. Let's listen to God's word and then unpack it. So let's begin as we always do. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Your spirit. Thank you. God loves us so much, and he loves to see us together, so we're strong together, and we love him in return, but we don't love perfectly, and so we want to always begin by lamenting and repenting of sin and asking God for forgiveness and for strength. Lord, you came to gather the nations into the kingdom of God's peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you come to us in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Bless you, we adore. 
adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosach, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels, some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter uh, to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exaltation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain discipline of the Lord to lose heart when he repro- when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight, uh, make straight paths for your feet, for what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you be standing outside, knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught and taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers, and there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout time, many men and women have left their mark for others to see. 
what that means is that their goodness or their wisdom or their success was so special that it will remain to be an inspiration for generations to come. One of those good, wise, and successful people is Coach Nick Saban. For 15 years, he has been the head coach at the University of Alabama. And Coach Saban has been leaving his mark for others to follow if they choose. And Coach Saban was already doing this before he came to Tuscaloosa. When Coach Saban was the head coach of LSU from 1999 to 2004, he left his mark there, literally, in a large banner that he left hanging on the back wall of the weightlifting room where all of the football players worked out. And the banner says this, there are only two pains in life, the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. Wow, that is good wisdom. It's a wisdom that definitely applies to the game of football, but it extends far beyond the game of football into every realm of life. Here it is. There are only two pains in life, the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. And each of us get to choose which pain will be ours. We heard about discipline in our second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, where in just six verses, the author today used the word discipline five times. He announces at the end, at the time, all discipline seems not a cause for joy, but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. Training and discipline, they go together. What do you think all those University of Alabama football players have been doing for the past two months? They have been training on the field in all the heat of the summer. And they've been training in the weight room. And they've been in the film room. And they're eating right. And they're sleeping right. That training takes great discipline. And that discipline can bring pain. But the rewards that come later, they make the pain of training all worthwhile. Coach Saban puts his players through all this training because he wants them to win. And he knows that they need to prepare themselves for game day. The players are under his care, so he disciplines them to win. This is very similar to the way that you good parents discipline your children. You tell them the rules and then you correct them and you admonish them when they go outside the rules, when they stray. You do that not out of anger. You do it out of love so that they experience success and happiness in the years to come. The great Catholic child psychologist, Dr. Ray Guarendi, he says this, love without discipline is child abuse. Love without discipline is child abuse. You see, you're not doing your children any favor by not disciplining them. Oh, it's okay, sweetheart, you can do that. And it's okay, I told you not to do that, but you can do that. It's like when you give them that freedom without disciplining them. In fact, you're doing them a big disservice because love must include discipline to prepare and protect your children for later in life. You don't discipline your children, someone's going to discipline your children. A teacher, a principal, a police officer, a judge, a spouse. No, sweetheart, don't put the dishes in the sink. Don't do that. And there's going to be, there's going to be discipline on and on and on. 
See, your children, like all of us, we live in a world where we're not by ourselves. We're made to live in community with all other people. And so your children need to learn that they cannot always have their way. That they're going to have to look out for other people and share what they have. And often they're going to have to give up what they'd like to do to do what they know they need to do to live and to flourish. Well, all of us are children of God. And God in his goodness disciplines us out of love so that we can make it safely home to him. The author of Hebrews just proclaimed. Here's what he said. Do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom he loves, he disciplines. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? You see, getting into the college football championship doesn't just happen. You have to want it, and you have to train for it. In the same way, getting into heaven doesn't just happen. You have to want it, and you have to train for it. In our gospel, just proclaimed, Jesus says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. That's action. You have to want it. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. He says, for many will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. Are you striving to enter through the narrow gate? Are you strong enough to enter? Jesus says that many won't be strong enough and won't make it in. You know, for me, I have this image of the older football entryways where they had the turnstile. You may remember, it's got the fingers, and they go between another one, and they let in one person at a time, and they're very heavy. They're really much taller than a person, and to get in, you push on them, and they go around, and then you get in. Now, a little kid can't push the turnstile, so he's not strong enough to get in. But an adult, a grown person, would be strong enough to push that and go in. Strength is needed to go into a football game. In the same way, a person with a weak relationship with Jesus won't be able to enter into heaven. Only a person with a strong relationship with him will be able to enter. Jesus warns there will be many left standing outside the doors of the kingdom, expecting to come in, only to be told, away from me, I do not know where you are from. Can you imagine how painful it would be to hear those words said to us by the King of Kings? Wow. On one hand, our Lord certainly does know where we're from. He created us. He knows everything about us. He does. And we heard this in our first reading, Isaiah. God speaks to Isaiah, and God says, I know their works, and I know their thoughts. He knows us through and through. So when Jesus says, away from me, I do not know where you are from, what does he mean? He's referring to those who have been a stranger to him, those who have not gotten to know him, those who have not established a living, loving relationship with him. In other words, Jesus doesn't know where they're coming from. He knows where they're from, but he doesn't know where they're coming from. You want to live with me forever and you never talk to me? Really? Really? You see, getting to know the Lord doesn't happen all at once. At baptism, that's the greatest day of our lives. The greatest day of our lives. In baptism, that's our initial introduction to the Trinity. At the moment of our baptism, we become children of the Father, brothers and sisters with the Son, and we have the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit. That's our first meeting with the Trinity. It's huge. We're born again. We're born into God's family. But that's just the start. From there, we have to build relationship. We're introduced, but now we have to build that relationship. It's kind of like being introduced to a handsome guy. If you're a girl and you get introduced to a, a marvelously handsome guy or for a guy to be introduced to a beautiful girl, Meeting one another is just the beginning. 
Whether or not you'll ever speak to them, the other person again, or see them again is up to you. You've met them. But what are you going to do now? The girl may be crazy about the guy, but if he doesn't call her, then he doesn't open the door to seeing her and knowing her in the future. How many girls must wish that a certain guy would call, but he doesn't. And so she knows of him, but she doesn't know him. Because they don't communicate. They don't build relationship. It's the same way with Jesus. You can know of him. You can know all about him. He walked on water. He fed 5,000. You can know all about him. We could talk for hours. But if you don't communicate with him, you don't really know him. We build relationship with God the same way we build relationship with one another, by talking and by listening. Talking and listening. And that's what God wants, relationship, to hear from us and then speak to us. But sadly, many people don't go to meet him and speak to him in Sunday Mass. Look at the empty seats. This used to be full before COVID. And so, okay, where are they? This is the highest opportunity to be with God and speak to him. He is here sacramentally in the tabernacle. And there are people that receive him into their bodies and they go back to their pew and they're thinking about what's for lunch or what do I do next or something else other than the one you've just received. So there are people that are not here. And then there's people that come to church just to fill the bill, you know? They resolutely come. It's the duty. It's the third commandment. I'm supposed to go. But really, this is a huge opportunity to be united with the one who loves you so much. And you're here and you're thinking of things a million miles away. The Mass is the privileged opportunity to speak to. You just heard him, the scriptures, that's God speaking. And now it's the opportunity throughout the Mass, through song, through prayer, especially when you receive him, go back to your pew after Holy Communion. He's there. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making my mom well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the job. Thank you for my family. Just everything. Please help me, guide me, guard me in my vocation, in my job. Help me with my family. And there's that conversation with Jesus. There are some people who come late to Mass. And I'm not pointing a finger at any of you good parents. I know there's a million things that come up with kids. So to occasionally be late, that's okay. But here again, to be routinely late for Mass or to leave early, to leave early. It's like, bye, I did that, you know, I'm done. I'm on my way. What's next? I went to Mass. And that's a big mistake because you're passing up this opportunity to build relationship with the one who is the gate to heaven. Jesus is the gate to heaven. This would be like going up to the prettiest girl in the class whom you've never spoken to and asking her to go with you to the prom. And she says to you, you got to be kidding. <laughs> I don't even know you and you're asking me to go with you to the prom. And you come back and say, yeah, but we were together in Algebra too. <laughs> we sat in civics and world history, same course. We had the same lunch period. We ride the same school bus home. <laughs> and the girl says, yeah, that's true. But you never even said hello. And now you're asking me to go with you to the best banquet of the year. And I don't even know where you're from. So no, go ask someone else because you haven't given me the slightest indication that you really want to be with me. Jesus speaks of this situation in the gospel just proclaimed. He says the people will try to get into the master's house after the door is locked and the master will tell them, I don't even know where you were from. And they come right back. Oh Lord, we ate and drank in your company and taught, you taught us in the streets. You see, but sadly, they never opened their hearts to really hearing him and then conversing with him and coming to know him, to have relationship with him. If we don't speak to him and listen to him, then we won't have relationship. And he won't know where we're coming from. Not where we're from, but where we're coming from. The biggest bank, whatever, and you want to be with me, and you've never even said hello, really? Just like that date at the prom, does that make sense? 
Getting to know Jesus is a lifelong process that we participate in. It's not about just showing up at Mass and you're fulfilling a Sunday obligation. It is an obligation. I believe that's what God was doing to get us in the, in the, in the mode of it, in the practice of it. But actually, this should be a love affair, just as when you meet the girl and you start dating and it comes dark, deeper, and you would never miss a date with the one you love. And if you're in love with love, who is God, you would never miss coming here, ever. It's about coming to Mass with the intention of speaking to God and listening to God with an open heart and mind. Fill me up with your wisdom, your will, and your way. I believe you, I trust you, I love you. And you build relationship. Do you remember what Jesus said, what happened to those who are locked out? They would be left outside the master's house. Imagine getting to Bryant Deddy Stadium on the day of the big Alabama-Auburn game, and the gate is locked. You've been looking forward to this. You go there, and the gate is locked. You can't get in Bryant Denny Stadium, and you wanted to be there. And you look through the turnstile, and there's mom and dad, and there's brother and sister, there's your friends, your family, and they're all eating and drinking and having a good time. And you call, they can't even hear you. They're having a good time, and you're out here. Oh, my goodness. That would be painful. That would be painful. You would be beside yourself with grief. How much worse to find yourself outside the kingdom of heaven, locked out. Jesus said, when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourself cast out, that would be mighty sad. But then think about being separated with the people that you know and love, the people that you personally knew, your mom and your dad, your husband and your wife, your children. And how would you like being separated from God, who is love itself? He's in there, in his house, and we're out here. Now you can easily see while there will be much wailing and grinding of teeth. Oh, the pain of regret that those people will experience for two reasons. Not only did they bring the pain on themselves, I did this to myself, but also it's a pain that will exist forever. You know, for the longest time, I never understood why our Lord indicated in this passage that there will be both wailing and grinding of teeth if we're separated from him, either temporarily in purgatory or eternally in hell. I never understood that grinding of teeth. It made sense that there'd be wailing because if there's fire in hell, and there surely is, you'd be, you'd be in torment. Can you imagine being burned? Ah, the fire of hell, that would make you wail. But where does the grinding of teeth come from? And then it dawned on me that that would come from our feelings of regret. I am sure that you have done things that you regret. I have, oh my goodness, all the time. Oh, I wish I had not stayed up so late last night, darn it, and watching TV, and now I'm late for my first appointment. That's regret. Oh, I wish I'd packed another change of clothes in my luggage, now I'm here and I have nothing to wear. That's regret. Oh, why did I wait so long to start my term paper? Why didn't I finish my taxes on time? Why didn't I ask her out? And now someone else is seeing her. Ah, the feeling of regret hurts. But the regret of being shut out of heaven would be way more painful. We will be plagued with the endless question, why? Why? Why didn't I listen to Father? Why didn't I obey my mom and dad? Why didn't I go to Mass? Why didn't I go to confession? Why did I do drugs? Why did I have sex outside of marriage? Why, 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 why? It's a why that will never go away. It's a sickening thing of regret, sickening feeling. And that's where that grinding of teeth, ah, I am so upset. Ah, why didn't I do that? Why did I do that? 
because it's a why that will never be answered. It's a why that will never go away. Ah. The, the separation outside the kingdom is eternal. God wants to preserve us from that. He loves us. He wants us in there. As he says in Hebrews today, strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight your paths of your feet that what is lame may not be disjointed but healed. I keep saying onward and upward. We don't go this way. We go this way. He beseeches us. He says strive to enter through the narrow gate. That takes some action. It takes some discipline. I, your pastor, am a coach. Not like Nick Saban. I'm a spiritual coach. The internal forum. And I will continue to remind you of the discipline necessary to enter through the narrow gate. He says many won't make it. Doesn't that just strike a note? Enter through the narrow gate. Many will try, but few will make it. Ah, after preaching to you about the necessity of Sunday Mass, yearly confession, getting your marriages blessed in the church, many of you have taken this seriously and are walking the step to live in accord with the teachings of your church. But some have not. They're going to be obstinate. I heard one guy say, Father, you're too rigorous. Really? I wonder if this guy would say that to Coach Nick Saban. Hey, coach, lighten up. Why are you so hard on the guys in the weight room? Lighten up. It's okay. They're just kids, you know. No, he wants to win on Saturday. And there's a, there's a discipline that will get people to where they want to go. You want to win? Here's what you got to do. The only way to win on Saturday is to be disciplined the other six days of the week. To win a national championship takes discipline. To win the kingdom of heaven takes discipline. And discipline often involves pain. But then, so does regret. Remember the powerful declaration of Coach Nick Saban. There are only two pains in life. The pain of discipline and the pain of regret. Pick your pain. The pain of discipline is temporary. The pain of regret is eternal. Let's keep the discipline that helps us build our relationship with Jesus. If we do, then we will be strong enough to enter through the narrow gate. And once we're in heaven, we will be free of all regrets. Amen. Please stand. Here we are, gathered together on the day of the Lord in God's house as a family, his family. And let's remind ourselves and dwell on the fact that we have this creed or we believe in. So let's go ahead and pray together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed we are to have such a loving God who bestows his love and he listens to us and he answers prayers if they be in his will. We lift up these petitions to the Father. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will give fruitful witness to the love of Jesus Christ, guiding us safely to eternal salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the life of every human person, from conception to natural death, will be protected in our laws, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian husbands and wives, that the Lord will strengthen them in their vocation and make them witnesses of Christ's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish be always dedicated to the to evangelization and works of true justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students and educators, that the new school year will be one of joy and growth in the knowledge of the truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to live always as disciplined, wholehearted disciples of our Savior, Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the war in Ukraine and the conversion of Russia, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, Bob Lyons, Dana Walter, Ed Parker, Mike Kruger, Edwin Raper, Larry Davis, Annie Hughes, John Houston, brother-in-law of Maria Wiggins, Martha Fearday, friend of Jean Schumacher, and Sherry Thompson, wife of Jeff Thompson, that they may experience the healing hands of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your wisdom, your will, your wonder, and your might. And on this very day, we thank you in a special way for the gift of baptism, where we were introduced to the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And on that day, we received the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. Please nourish these virtues so that we are filled with desire, with determination, and act in discipline to walk in the ways of your Son, so that we merit to be with you forever in heaven. Today, we lift up all of our prayers to you in his holy name, Jesus, trusting that he lives and reigns with you in union with the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our preparation hymn is in choral praise, Ready the Way, number 221.
Please stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. We pray the praise of the Lord in his name. For our good and the God's holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We are gathered this morning as family, faith family, one father, and we are one family, the family of God. So let's unite ourselves and pray and pray to our Father the very prayer that our brother taught us, Jesus, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us turn to one another now and share a sign of Christ's peace with them. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
realizing that there are some of our community that are not here. They're having a watch Holy Mass from afar virtually or later in this day of Sunday. And so I'd like to offer a beautiful prayer for a spiritual communion with God. And if there are people here, I'll explain in a minute the, qua the ramifications that if you're going to have a spiritual communion, this would apply to you too and whisper this in your heart. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We talked about building relationship with Jesus. You would say this is the capstone of the relationship. Just as when a man and woman come together, the ultimate expression of their love is the one flesh union. The two become one. And here, this is truly God, and he comes to us. So divinity comes to humanity in the one flesh union, the flesh and blood of Jesus and our flesh. It's the capstone. In order to receive him, you must be Catholic, and you must be a practicing Catholic. That means faithfully come to Mass every Sunday. If not, that would be a matter for confession to renew. And it's also that you've been in the last year. That's the longest period of time the church says that you can go. Hopefully you come more often. It also means that you're not aware of a serious sin, okay, that would break the union. We have this union. We wound it in venial sin. We break it in mortal sin. That has to be remedied in confession before you come back and receive the all-holy God that doesn't repair the wounds here. And so keep that in mind. Paul says, examine yourself before you receive God in communion. And so if you're here and you're Catholic but not prepared, or if you're here and you're non-Catholic, you're still welcome to come forward with the community not to receive communion but to receive a blessing. If you come to my line with your hands on your heart, I will be pleased to give you a priestly blessing. If you come to one of our three extraordinary ministers of communion, they will wish you peace, and you can wish them peace in return. Thank you. Please join in singing our communion hymn in choral praise, Ponte Vita, number 525.
Our second communion hymn is in worship, 731, Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Just a few brief announcements, folks, of parish life on this Sunday. And let's see, uh, after the next Mass, which is the 1 o'clock Hispanic Mass, they're going to offer a taco fiesta out in the parking lot in the parish hall. So if you do whatever you do today and you're interested in Mexican food, 2 o'clock, 
back at our church parking lot would be a great opportunity to share with them. That's at 2 o'clock, the Taco Fiesta, which is today. And a few more things. This is the last day to register for Sunday school. If you have children or grandchildren in a public school, we want to catechize them in a formal way, one hour a week. And so Miss Jean has a booth out there that is uh, scheduling them. We begin in another week. And that's uh, between the masses, uh, after the 8.45, before the 11, to bring your children and leave them with us. We teach them about the mass, the Bible, the liturgical se seasons, just everything, the saints. And so it's very important. All grades, K through 8, are going to be instructed, and that, that's a great opportunity. So register today and then come and bring them next week. The Boston Butts were two weeks away from Labor Day, and so if you're interested in having a beautiful meal, the Knights, Knights of Columbus uh, smoke 120 Boston Butts, and they're about half sold. And so if you buy a ticket, uh, they're $40, but they're well worth it, and so uh, then they would have them ready for you just to take home on the Labor Day weekend. Uh, that's go out here and then turn to the left, and that's uh, the area for the Boston Butts. Uh, please get a bulletin, folks. You know, we always write about a topic, and the topic this week that I write about is RCIA. That's a four-letter acronym that means the right, R-I-T-E, of Christian Initiation of Adults. And uh, it's a beautiful opportunity for you that are Catholic to relearn your faith, of those that are away from the church to renew and reclaim their faith, and for people who aren't Catholic. So bring them. Uh, before COVID, we filled the parish hall room there with 85 to 105 people, and so I'd like to get back to that. During COVID, we just had the people that were non-Catholic, about 17 or 25 a year. And so uh, you're welcome. So it's on a Tuesday evening from 7 to 8. We have one hour on different topics. And uh, bring a friend, uh, bring someone away from the church or someone who doesn't know about the Catholic faith. We'd love to expose them to the truth and treasure that we have found in the Catholic Church. And it starts the second Tuesday after Labor Day, so second Tuesday of September. And so read about it in here. Pick, pick up one or watch it online and read about more things too. And uh, we have two of our regular servers, and we have a visiting server, and that's Thomas Rogers. Thomas Rogers is with us today, and uh, a good friend. He's a beautiful family. I knew him from my previous parish up in Gardendale, uh, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Catholic Church. And when Thomas was younger, he's very young now, but when he was younger, he was in our youth group and very active in the youth group on retreats and all that we did together. He went to John Carroll Catholic High School, and he graduated with the President's Award. Every year, one student gets the President's Award from the bishop for being an outstanding student. And Thomas Rogers got the President's Award, and then he went on to a great university. He went to Auburn University and um, my university, so we got a linkage there too. And he graduated with honor in aerospace engineering, and now he's been serving three years up in Huntsville as an engineer for the Boeing company and doing great work. And uh, he called a couple months ago and he just said, you know, I'm feeling this tug on my heart that maybe God is calling me to be a priest. Could I shadow you for a few days and just see what you do? And so he did. He came in Thursday and we've had many functions with the school, with parent-teacher, we have more to come. And uh, he's been at our masses and so he'll leave Tuesday to go back with his family and let it percolate. We call it you know, discernment. Is it good to be single? Yes. Is it good to be married? Yes. Is it good to be a priest? Yeah. And the, the hard decisions are between three goods. If it's good or bad, it's kind of clear what we need to do. And so Thomas is discerning, and so please pray for him. I think it's great that he's here. You get a chance to see him and uh, put him on your prayer list and everything. And we've been praying for him for weeks since he called now that God would just be clear with regard to which direction he's calling Thomas. And if he chooses to go to seminary, that would be a holy thing. And we have another man on the journey to be informed as a priest. So I'd like to offer a, a warm round of applause from the Holy Spirit community for Thomas Rogers. <laughs> You will be in these people's prayers. He is so impressed with you at the other masses. The people, they're so warm, just like Father Charles. We had dinner with, or lunch with Father Charles on Friday, my nephew that was just ordained. And it's just a joyful thing. Chuck is so alive, and, and so is Thomas and everything. And he's just a beautiful light to the, to the world. And so he had got to ask many questions of Charles, who just got out of seminary, and it was beautiful. So please keep him in your prayers, if you would. Thank you. Thanks for being here. The family that prays together stays together. We want to stay together now and forever, so let's keep gathering to, to be strengthened on the journey. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Our closing hymn is number 628 in worship, Go Make of All Disciples. Please join in singing. Yeah.
Accept.